super intense, and、uh, they we have a lot of project need to do. So at that moment, I would say I, I almost、um, there's no afraid anymore. The everything just push you to do to do everything. So I lose my feeling. I just working on different projects. But the thing is, I learned a lot. Welcome to or welcome back to Fashion Career Stories. My name is Lucas Silva Edwards. I am a career strategist and executive coach with more than ten years of experience in the fashion and luxury industry here in Paris, France. My role is to help you design a successful life and career in one of the most glamorous industry on the planet, but also one of the most competitive. For that reason, I have interviewed. Fashion professionals at different stages of the career, in order to decode their best practices, tactics, and strategies. My hope for you is that you will find in this conversation some inspiration and insights that will help you build your professional journey in the world of fashion and luxury. My guest today is Yalin Xu. At the moment of this interview. Yalin was finishing her end of studies internship at Rimova, and now she works over there full time. Congratulations, Yalin, to start your European career in such an exciting brand. You probably wonder what Yalin does over there and why I precise European career. Well, Yalin is currently a creative content coordinator at Rimova. But this is not her first job. Previously, she held other marketing position back at home in China. This is precisely why I wanted to have this conversation. In France, we usually study full time until our master degree, and then we enter in the workforce. However, in the large majority of countries, people usually work some time before joining a master program. As a coach. I can only recommend that path or a variation of it. One, I believe that work experience will give you the maturity that you need to design a career strategy. Two, working will show your current limitation and will be a catalyst to your motivation and drive. Three, work will permit you to start building a network. And will help you refine your professional options. This is why I wanted Yalin to tell us about her experiences in China, her choice to go back to school, and the reality of interning inside the creative team of a major European brand. And with no further ado, please enjoy this wide-ranging conversation with Yalin Xu. <laughs> Hi, Yalin. How are you? Great. Hi, Lucas.、Uh, it's so good to 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 have you.、Um, I wanted to to have you in the in the podcast because、um, you are doing your your last、uh, internship before entering the the let's say our industry, the fashion and luxury industry, and、uh, you are currently a creative at Remova. So I was like, oh, that's super exciting and. Remova is one of the latest brand that has been doing a lot of things, so that's why I wanted to to talk to you uh, uh, about that. But before we go there,、uh, I wanted、uh, I know you come from China, and I wanted to understand where the passion for fashion luxury come from. What was kind of the the beginning for you in that、uh, in that world? Yeah, I think、uh, actually for. Uh, each girl, maybe not each girl. Many girls they have the dreaming of、uh, dressing good, or、uh, they have the they want to be stylish. So I think it's the very initial or uh, uh, instinct passion for me. I wanna know the、uh, how the beauty, how the beautiful things create. So that's my、um, the initial motivation lead me to the fashion industry. And also、uh, when we were in China before, now I'm in Paris. Before coming to Paris, I work in、um, uh, advertising agency. So my client、uh, almost are either beauty or either fashion brand. So that's also um, uh, my interest in the fashion. Yes. 
Okay, so let's say your your interest in fashion started like more like in when you were working, or it started really early on, maybe in your childhood. How, how yes. That moment? Yes, in my childhood and my family, my mother, and um, yes, and my 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 professional career before. Do you remember in your let's say more personal life, what was kind of the the earliest memory that uh, caught your attention? Uh yeah, I remember actually before um the junior school. Actually, all of my uh clothes are were bought by my mom. But one day, I suddenly when we went to the a boutique and I said, okay, um, I wanna pick this one rather than the one you pick for me. And then because the 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 actually the pants the trouser is the um, it's kind of boyish one. It's not like a skirt because you know, uh, for young girl they always like pink stuff. So, but for me that that time I I pick um kind of boyish pants. So, I think this is kind of start of my, let's say, um, rebellious styling begin. So yeah, I think this it's a very memorable moment for me. Okay, do you remember like? Uh... If it was inspired by something, when you choose that, is there something that inspired you at that moment to choose those kind of garments, or what did you decide to to pick up those? I think my because uh, some animation I watched before. Okay. Yeah. Uh, you know there are um, princes and prince. There are hero. There are bad people. So there are also cowboy. I okay. I guess maybe I watched some movie or animation. I saw the cowboy, and when I went to the boutique, I found okay, this might be the pen, well, which was were was weird by the cowboy. And then I think ah, I I'd love to try this one. Okay, ah, that's awesome. It's true inspiration. I, I remember on my side, one of the earliest memory was um, mobsters uh, movies, and I was I, I love their suits. And for me, it was like hey, one day I, I wanted pinstripe suit and and uh, you know the shirts and everything. And uh, I think that was yeah. least, as long as I remember one of the things that always struck me. And I said one day I want to 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 wear that. Okay, so that's a that's a nice uh, a memory. And and from there, so you have that passion for clothes. You decided to maybe have your own identity style. Hold that passion became something that you say okay i'm going to work in relationship with fashion and luxury when when was that and how did that happen mm, i think um as i said that in uh advertising agency but the thing is i'm i'm not working as the designer or stylist i work as the copywriter so uh at that moment my client um uh, some uh, fashion brand and i need to write some uh, let's say concept or the whole storytelling behind the, the product launch or the branding um, campaign. So uh, during that, I try, I start to uh, realize that for each fashion brand, for each designer, actually they have a whole story behind the inspiration. And also for different design designer, they have maybe they have a whole different childhood or uh, background that kind of build their aesthetic. So to me, um, I think gradually a fashion, it's not no more a garment, a beautiful clothes. It's becomes of a, a culture to me. So it's like a book. Uh, I, I, in one period, I remember I read a lot of books uh, of different designer uh, and different genre, Japanese genre or uh, uh, European designers. So I really find this is a, a very big universe. It's related to um, maybe phys uh, psychology and the sociology, and also the aesthetic and also history and um, a lot of things. So uh, start them, start from them. I'm trying to um, know more, and but I find this is not enough because uh, for my job, I work in the just a small part. It's just marketing part. It's it's a very small part, but it's important part of the whole industry. And also in China, because to me, luxury mm, is many belongs to and uh, established in uh, European countries. So then I decided to quit my job and um, come to Paris. I want to know the whole industry. And uh, at that moment, my first choice, I think I need 
I want to go to the school to learn more about the industry. So that's why I choose um, UFM Institute for Hongse de la Mode and to learn the international fashion and the luxury management program to know the whole industry. Okay, so it's really like from the first uh, encounter with a uh, with a fashion brand in your previous job that you decided, okay, I want to really dig in and understand more about what does it what is it that in that industry if I understand uh, uh, well. Uh, yes, yes, from my job, from the I would say some uh, surface superficial things, and gradually I go deeper, and I find this is a very charming universe to know more okay and you said you 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 you, uh, you read some books about some designers do you remember any designer that like uh, come into mind that you say wow okay that's a crazy story or that really uh, yeah you? absolutely um i would say there are three I, they are all from different country uh alexander mcqueen from the uk and uh, uh magella from uh, antwerp and also um, Kikawa Kubo, Yohia Yamamoto from uh, Japan. Okay, that's a, a great one. Just quickly like that, what did you like in each of those? What was the, the thing that struck you the most or, or you connected the most with each of them? Uh, I find uh, McQueen to me, he's like a bad kid. Uh, he actually, he is not from a very... Um, we reach or well educated family that doesn't have a very good family background but it's a pure pursuit of beauty and also the um, i would say it's kind of talent built him her uh, his uh, own aesthetic and um and for magella i think he's also i mean this two uh, designer they had they hold totally different personality and taste and for magella i think it's kind of Zen to me, and he has his own philosophy. Uh, uh, let me think of uh, there is the China Chinese uh, philosopher and uh, called Dao. It's like um, empty blank. You need to give some empty side um, to think to uh, let people think more. And also, uh, let me think of uh, uh, Wabi Sabi. I would say. It's a Japanese aesthetic. Um, yeah, this also linked to uh, Yohi Yamamoto. So yeah, I think they kind of uh, have some, share some common aesthetic and uh, mindset. But for Rikawa Kubo, I would say he she's super smart uh, in terms of creativity and uh, business side. So yeah, I think three of them, they are very different, but they have the very unique and the strong uh, character personality. Yeah, it's true. All of those that you mentioned, as you said, between the beauty, the space, the I like the what you talk about the philosophy. It make make me think about what you just said that fashion is connected to so many different uh, let's say topics: the philosophy, the psychology, the sociology, and how each designer used those elements to tell a story or to to go beyond the functionality of clothes. It's, uh, in my opinion, one of the things that make our industry so so unique and, and so rich. So, yeah, exactly. Yeah, and also for me, uh, for a brand, especially designer brand, the garment is not about just how to wear, it's about how you use the uh, garment to express yourself, what kind of people you want to be. It's true, it's true. It's, uh, it's always been, uh, I remember for me, one of the, the question I asked myself when I was uh, at the, um, at school uh, was from the high heels, because I was working at that time at, at Lanvin uh, as a, doing my internship as a uh, you know a product uh, manager, and I was on the shoe and jewelry department for women, and I remember having the private sales, and then so I talked to my uh, you know girlfriends and and I said yeah I have the private sales do you, do you want me to get you something. And when I talk about high heels, the 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 eyes like lit up. So it was like, okay, why why is it so attractive? And me as a cisgender man, I was like, why do I like a woman in high heels? What is it so attractive about it? So it was it was that question that kept into my mind. And when I had the the opportunity to do a 
you know, a, a, a thesis at the end of the, 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 the master degree, I choose that topic, say, what is the attractivity of high heels? Because I was, I wanted to understand that, what it represents, how you show another side of yourself. Uh, of course, like you dress for yourself, but for the, 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 the way somebody else perceive you, that idea of seduction, that idea of height. It, it was, for me, that was the moment when I, I really saw a complete, uh, let's say, a circle of all the topics that can surround fashion. Yeah. And it was just one piece of fashion, which is high heels. I was like, wow, it's, okay. it's amazing. Exactly. It's also linked to maybe your unconscious list, like yeah. Floyd. Yeah, exactly. It, 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 uh, it's, uh, it's great. So, so you decided to go to, from uh, China, quit your job and, uh, and, uh, and go to school. Do you remember what was the, the thought process that you got at the, when you decided to choose to go to Paris to, to school? What was, what was in your mind? Uh, how did you decide that? Because it's not an easy choice to, to do that, go to in the other side of the planet, quit your job. How did you decide to, to, to do that? What was your thought process? Uh, yes. So, um, before, uh, coming to Paris, the, the last job I did in China is actually in the e-commerce department and in, um, uh, fashion brand. And uh, I would say, because to me at the moment, I realized e-commerce is more about the number, the, about the sales. Everything is just to lift sales revenue um to uh to increase the consumerism so but for me i would say i'm i'm kind of frustrated because for me fashion means more meaningful and valuable things so this is one uh reason and also as i said i want to know the whole industry not just e-commerce not just marketing not just uh, how to write a slogan let's see so i'd like uh, to know more and why pick Paris because um, luxury and uh, fashion brand to me Paris they know how to build a story about the whole brand and also the uh, the savoir faire behind the the whole collection so that's why I choose Paris and um, yeah I made a big decision and also at that moment I think I still I have nothing to lose so I, I want to try different things. Why not? And also, I, I always uh, love Europe countries, different countries. I love travel. So, yeah, I just come to here. And I'm super lucky because uh, when I came to Paris, it's actually the one year after COVID. So before my year, before my year actually, uh, in my school, everyone, they have to do the um online class so when i arrive here i can i have the chance to do the in-person class which is super important for me yeah it's true that uh, that's changed everything in terms of experience especially when you come from uh, another country uh i i understand so and were you coming back to that decision were you were you afraid uh, about leaving uh, china your what you know to go to to france uh, in your past have you uh, have you ever lived in an other country uh no i haven't but i travel a lot but not just not stay there uh and to be honest i'm i'm kind of afraid because i yeah before paris i barely use english and uh so i'm a, i'm kind of afraid of the uh, different language and different culture and also you know in france you have to speak french so <laughs> that's gonna be super suffer for me and because i need to learn um adapt to language at, at the same time so yes i would say that's the, bi the 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 biggest challenge for me but apart from that i feel more exciting to yeah to know everything here yeah that's uh that's a good one. It is a, uh, you know, that sometimes that anxiety that we feel that and, and that fear that we feel be, when we're able to shift it to a, a excitement and say, okay, it's going to be a new discovery, something new, even I'm, I'm afraid. That's when you're able like to make those big jumps uh, and, uh, and yeah, and discover what's happening in the other side of, uh, of fear. So. You're yeah. Really, really brave decision, and it's not easy. I'm asking that because I imagine people 
that are listening to us, maybe some of them are thinking about those kind of uh, big change. Uh, and and it's true, being fearful, it's uh, it's part of, it's part of it. And um and coming back to your experience here in in Paris, how was the the integration? What was the thing that uh, that struck you the most in terms of learning, knowledge, new habits uh, here in uh, in Paris, or even at the in uh, at the school in terms of uh, you know uh, what is it to to work in fashion and the luxury industry? Yeah, I think uh, actually till now I stay in Paris for um, one year. And uh, actually at the beginning half year, I would say it's super, I think it's almost because of EFM or my school, the class is super intense and uh, they will have a lot of project need to do. So at that moment, I would say I, I almost, um, there's no afraid anymore. The everything just push you to do it. To do everything so i lose my feeling i just working on different projects but the thing is i learned a lot because i really thanks to the um the class structure of efm because many people uh, many professors they uh from the industry they are the manager of the uh, different luxury brand or fashion brand so all my class they are super pragmatical and uh, we can know the most uh, top tier um, and no, uh, in front, I would say the um, uh, yeah pragmatical experience from the different professor. So yes, so in school I think it's super intense and challenging. And after half year, uh, we need to uh, find an internship. So it's it's another journey. So uh, how to find an internship, how to know different people. And I remember at the beginning, actually, I don't know, uh, because in China, I don't really use email. So when come to here, everything we need to contact by email. So I even don't know how to how to put my word in, in the email. So everything like start from zero. And uh, yeah, and until now, I, I find I know a lot and gradually get used to that. That's such a... A funny detail, the email thing. So how does it work in, in China? Everything is on chats and like that? Yeah, we use WeChat. We use WeChat. WeChat. And, uh, you, you know, uh, one, I remember that I used to, uh, want to send an email to, um, people in one company, but at the beginning, I don't know, you know, when you send to someone, uh, different email, you actually need to send separately. Yeah. But I put them together. So, <laughs> I mean, that's actually a disaster. Now I think, wow, that's a, that's a nightmare. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's an experience, at least. It's true. So many little things to, to learn. But I never thought that, yeah, the, the email, it uh, will be one of them. So that's a nice detail. And in terms of, um, you know, you say you have a lot of projects, you, le you, you learn a lot. What was the kind of the one or two things that you that stay with you now that you are I left the, the 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 school that you say okay I, I discovered that what was it? Yeah, I would say uh, it's merchandising class, which is super impressive to me, and uh, also uh, fashion history. Okay. Yeah, because I, I would say fashion in uh, fashion history class is actually what uh, motivated me to France because, um, yeah, it's a it's a big topic and also it's a it's like a culture related things. Mm -hmm. So I learned uh, a lot through this class and for merchandising because my background is the more linked to marketing to communication. So to me, it's a totally new topic. And um, I think it's very, it's a very important part of the industry. And also after learning that, I realized, okay, this is not what I want to do in the future. So, yeah. That's a, that's a great one. It's true. That's why it's so important to try and discover new things just because I, like that, we know that's not what we want to do, but we understand why it's important. And sometimes yes. as valuable as knowing where we want to go. Yeah, I find uh, actually there are um, different lessons from EFM and uh, some of them, uh, they just give me a, a know-how of how it runs and what's the role of this um, 
this job, but it also、uh, makes me think if it is really what I want to do. And after knowing the whole process, I still、uh, prefer to link to my previous、uh, work. But I think no, it's not about I make a wrong choice or I should stay just stay in in China. It's just it's made me feel, think about more what I really want to do in the future. Okay, that's a really interesting one, and and talking about your 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 future, and you said that there is a an internship to be done at the end of the the AFM. How did you manage、uh, you coming from China, not having specially like、uh, any network or things like that? How did you think about your future, where you wanted to work? What was kind of the the thought process and the objective that you had? Hmm. Well,、um, actually, when I、uh, started to find internship, I'm kind of、um, sure that I wanna work in communication or marketing department. And、uh, but the thing is, it's kind of struggle because my I would say my French、uh, level is it's not that fluent. So、uh, there, I made some challenging when、um, I was trying to find an internship. And、uh, in terms of、uh, network, I would say, how did I find my current internship is through the、uh, official website, the career website of LMMH.、Mm -hmm. So I try to know more people, but the more、uh, important of this part is to know、um, what what they are doing and uh, uh, what it looks like in different company. Mm, so I would say when it's come to find a real job, it's still linked to、uh, your capability and your your CV and your portfolio. Okay, so that's a that's great advice, and it shows that yeah, even though you don't have experience, especially in the fashion industry, you're able to find at least an internship through the official website, and、uh, that's、yeah. that's a that's a lot of hope for people who are in the same situation, and sometimes it's、uh, it's really stressful. And so yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, be, uh, and also at that moment, I try a different channel. I try to、uh, send message on LinkedIn, and、uh, I met some very nice people. They give me the opinion, and also almost as I would say, one hundred messages. Maybe you get three reply. I think it's super normal. But at moment at big beginning, I not just me, my friend. We are super. Um, anxious about it because we are always thinking. Okay, I send one message, I should get a reply. But the thing on LinkedIn is not that true. So gradually we find okay, just keep keep polite and keep nice to ask people about if there any opportunity. But lower your expectation.、Sorry. They don't have the. They this is not um um. They they don't have to reply you because everyone is busy. So lower your expectation, but keep to trying to keep to reach out different people. We try this. I tried this channel, and also I tried.、Um, yeah, I was the, the the official website, and also、um, through school, the、uh, the career fair、uh, provided by IFM. So、uh, I tried different channels, and、uh, maybe different people they can find the job through different、uh, way. But for me, I I got my current job from the official website. Yeah. Okay. That's those are great advice. The lower the expectation, in a way, just keep sending message to increase the amount of probability that you're gonna receive one. Because at the end, that's uh, that's where the things uh happen. And do you remember when the, you said you met some people that make some comments and answer you? What 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 did you write them and what kind of comments did you receive from them? Hmm. So I um uh what I write is basically about um if you will have an internship position in summer and、uh, yeah because at the moment that is my goal so I didn't ask、uh, other topic it's very straightforward so some of them they will of course say uh they have or they they don't have and some of them. They also love to yeah. Of course, I also ask if we can have a like coffee time or have a very quick call. So I remember there are some very nice、um, people. They offer me a quick call. We talk about thirty minutes and、uh, talk about、uh, how it, the position、uh, works in the company and how to find internship like that. 
So yeah, it's yeah, basically like this. It's kind of two things. Okay. And do you remember one or two things that they told you about uh, what does it mean to have an internship? Anything that uh, le a learning that you got from those conversations? Mm, yes, I think. Um, I think the it's case by case because I I talked to some people who working um uh, marketing who and some people working um, retail, so basically they told me internship is uh generally to do some uh daily stuff daily tasks, um and uh and also there's no maybe the your creativity gonna be limited because you are doing the internship and uh you i would say um it's more uh like help the your manager or your supervisor to do something they don't want to do that's the truth so they tell me the truth and also they just um they try to um reassure me because anyways they tell me you will find an internship it's just a matter of time and but after experience all of them i find this is true at the beginning we were we were um stressed out but i mean uh, as long as you try you keep trying i think you will always find the one maybe it's not the perfect one you like but still you will find one i love it that's a, a great advice that yeah, we all feel anxious at the beginning, but eventually we find something. And you know, it's not perfect, but at least it's a, a foot uh, inside the, the, the industry. And that's a, oh, yes. a gr great advice. And um, and I love what you say about like, um, yeah, helping your manager. It's true that uh, uh, when you are doing the internship, and that's something I always recommend. It's like, okay, how can you help? Not necessarily what can you learn directly is not so much focus on you. It's like, how can you help? And from helping, you discover a lot of things uh, around you. And those are the experience that then you're going to be able to transfer. But first and foremost, you're there to help in any capacity that it, it's possible. And uh, and I think it's a, it's, it's a great way to frame it. And, and so talking now more a little bit more about your, your specific experience. So you said now you work at uh, at Remova. Uh, what, why did you choose to apply to Remova? And can you tell us a little bit more about, well, what does it mean to do an internship over there? Uh, well, I choose Remova because this is a bit different from other fashion brand because it's more it's it's a combination of fashion and also lifestyle. And uh, for me, um, because I I used to work as a copywriter, so for me, I have a perception of that storytelling is super important. I know for fashion brand, they also um, also think this is is crucial. But for lifestyle brand, I think it's it's much more important for the lifestyle brand. So for me, I love the combination of both fashion side, the visual side, and the uh, logistic thinking. I would say this uh, this kind of sign. So uh, I love the uh, I love the the mix. So that's why I choose Remova, and also um, because the creative team they are working um, not just a visual. Uh, as far as I know, for other fashion brand, um, they the they don't call it a creative team. They call it image team, and the image team is under communication department. So what they work on is more focused on purely image creation but for us uh the creative team we can do we can try a different way of course we have shooting we have video um but at the meantime we have exhibition we have publication and we have different events we can even have a um, podcast or um doing the concert the different trying different media to create a, uh, the content so at that moment i find uh, this team is uh, they they have what I really wanted to do. They have they they are super diverse and also my team. Uh, it's because you know Germ uh, Remova is a German brand, so French is not the uh, working language. We use English. So at that moment, I think uh, yeah, it's give me time to um, improve my French. At the meantime, I can try to use English because it, I get more um, comfortable with this language. So that's why I picked this brand. Okay, makes sense. Yeah, makes, makes sense. Yeah, makes sense. It's a it's a smart move. Lifestyle 
with the, the storytelling, the English, because it's a German brand. But if I understand well, so the creative team, it's in, it's in Paris, it's not in Germany. Yeah, it's in Paris. Okay. And, um, and I'm asking about like, uh, how does, how does it work, uh, in the creative team? Because you say it doesn't belong to the image team, like in a fashion brand. So where, where, where does it sit in the hierarchy? Who do you, it, it reports to? The... Uh, so for our team, we also under marketing department. Okay. And uh, uh, for marketing department, we will have different teams. For example, PR team and um uh, campaign team so when uh, for us when they have some um demand for content creation for example there is the branding campaign or there is the uh, product launch campaign or pr event uh, we we work together to think about okay we use what kind of media we use what kind of um story or the what kind of visual to uh, make the idea make the event come true and also, uh, this is one, one way we support the other teams under marketing department. And also we have our own content need to create to um, um, increase the brand voice, in the voice and also to try different uh, innovative approach. Like we have our own editorial content on social media. And um, yes, this is a basic two mission for uh, support them and do our own content. Okay, so it's really like uh, uh, when I hear you, there is that feeling that everything is test and learn, like you're able to uh, experiment in so many different type of uh, media with the same idea that to tell a story, but with way more freedom that uh, let's say more luxury or fashion, classic fashion uh, brand. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's uh, that's amazing. And and so far, what what have have been like kind of the the key learnings or the things that uh, more like strike you in uh, in, in that experience so far? Uh, I think there are two things. The first is uh, as an intern, of course, we what we work more on is the some operational tasks like uh, sample you do the deal with the invoicing but to me this is i mean for, maybe for some people they can find this this kind of boring but i think it's really important for me to go through the process because for content creation you have to it's it's you can't avoid doing this kind of thing because you have vendor and you have the sample the product you wanted to shoot so after knowing this part i know the uh, the most basic uh, elements of this, the whole working uh, work process. And also uh, after, um, for this part, I know how to manage different, um, it's like um, how to manage time because some of this work, they are super time consuming. So it's um, uh, kind of practice my time management skills. And also, uh, yeah, the, another part is the image production. And because um, for me, I don't have the design or graphic design or um, some, um, yes, this kind of background. So for me, I, I know that uh, how to create image, how to do the image production and uh, also uh, ha uh, gradually uh, have the sensibility of visual. So yeah, for now everything is still ongoing. I wouldn't say I'm uh, a master or pro of this, but still, I think I learned a lot from these two parts. Yeah, those are. It's true. It's a, it's amazing. Those when you mix both, like the the image and at the same time the really really operational things, because that's the reality of our industry. You are, there is some glamorous task, but there is some operational task that need to be done. Yeah. And, uh, and I really love the way you frame it about like, I get better in my time management. And uh, it's, I think it's really a really smart way to, to, to put it. Uh, because if you get better at that, you have more time to learn about what you really want. And at the same time, you improve your input and in how you help your yes. manager or the, or the team. So they think you are more valuable to them. So it, it is a, a, a great way to, kind of win in either way. 
a win-win. And also, I think for operational、uh, tasks, it's、uh, I find actually you can you are not just doing this thing. Sometimes you need to think about how to find a, a smarter solution to save time. For example, of course we can do it manually, but maybe we can f- figure out there might be some technical. Um, solution. We can find a partner to increase to improve the the website, the platform we are using, and for us, it also can save our time in the future, and we can focus more on creative side. It's true. That's a, a really smart one. That's why I think、e- interns are so important, and it's something I always said that. Remember that you, when an intern arrive, his value it's also in the. Newness of the way they see things and the freshness, and sometimes that that newness come also with new way of doing things. So it is important to, you know, sometimes to rechallenge the way things are done, not specifically at the beginning because at the beginning you still learning, and the idea is not to revolutionize everything. But after understanding how things are done, it is interesting to say, okay, but what if if we do that? What if if we do that? Because sometimes those small details、yeah. can change really the life of everybody. So it is a, a great thing. Yeah, I, yeah, I really love the wording you use. In what if? I think what we we need to think more. What if? What if? Then we can find really different solutions. Yeah, no, it's true. The, especially the technical part, because、uh, let's say social media, internet, the, the software, everything evolves so much, and. One of the great thing there is to have an intern. It's somebody who, in a way, it's more know more about those some technical aspect of it, or have another way of thinking about how to do things. That if we are humble enough to say, okay, let's try that way, we can change the the process in a way in the best,、yeah. uh, more efficient、exactly. way, and、uh, it 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 is a it is great for everybody. No,、yeah. that's、uh, th- that's great. So, let's say like、um, if you had to kind of、uh, give some advice to somebody that is entering the fashion、uh, industry or maybe a few years younger than you, what what would you say? Like, are the key advice you will give them today?、Mm, I would suggest them、uh, try to experience different thing. Yeah, because and try to think about the the reason behind why you like it.、Um, for example, if you go to the gallery and、um, you can think about okay, maybe、um, you can think about how how do they make money. This is linked to the business strategy, and also you can think about okay, why they pick this artist, why they pick this artwork. So this linked to merchandising, and also you can think about. Why I like this painting? This is actually the creative content. So I would say try different thing, and maybe you will find yourself get interested in one of the parts, and you can find what's the real、um, thing、um, makes you yeah makes you like it. So when it's it's come, everything can I think can kind of link to the fashion industry, different、um, job, different department, and then you will know what you wanna do. I think yeah, this for me is how I find I I my interest in the creative side. So I would suggest them to yeah to experience more and to think about what they really like. I love it such a such wisdom. I love, it's 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 great because it's true. The one of the thing I always try to push people to do as a coach is to think about their why, because loving the fashion industry or loving shopping or loving clothes or brands, it's one thing. But I like the way you frame it about like, okay, why do I like? And asking the right different type of questions to kind of figure out. What are the things that resonate with me, and what do I want to experience? And experience many of those, as many of those as possible, to kind of discard the one I don't like, choose the one I like slowly and slowly. And、uh, I, I like it because, in my opinion, that's、uh, probably one of the framework for for success. Yeah, and and also I'm thinking if、um, you are interested in the creative content creation, I think.、Um, Try to have a habit of record everything, recording everything. No matter what kind of media, you can use 
uh, writing, you can use video, you can also take photos. And don't think, don't always think, okay, I want to do a project. There's, you don't need to do a very fancy and co uh, and a very big project. So you can just take some photo. I remember when I have an interview with a brand and it's a visual, um, it's a, it's an image position, creation position. And uh, I'm not a photographer, but I have the habit. I really love to take some uh, daily photo. So I, at that moment, I show her a uh, image, a photo I take, which is the um, a lady and the a lady on the on the street I meet. So he, uh, she wear a shirt, and by shirt is there is a sweat. I think she just finished the workout, and the sweating on the shirt is a circle. So. Based on that, I try to find more circle in my life, and I have a like a very small album which is I record different circle in my life, and life is a circle, like a karma. So that's my story. When I, I had an interview with her, I tell my tell told her my story, and she and she give me the second chance. That's... So I think yes, I think it's this not really relate to big thing. It's just you find your idea, you find some very smart and small thing and you can put it into your portfolio. Awesome. And what do you mean she gives you a second chance? Well, what does it mean? Uh, the, the further interview okay. Okay. with her. Okay. Yeah. That's, uh, that's amazing. I, I love it because it's true at the end of the day, we all have maybe yeah, a few experiences. We have maybe good like uh, schools or degrees, but is those point of views about like the creative side, the industry, how we see the world uh, that people connect with. And you see, for you, it's circle and sweat in a picture. And yeah, that's the beginning of a, a, you know, a creative journey for, for you. And, uh, and I think what was really resonate with me is the fact that you were, you were brave enough to show it to her, to tell her the, the, the story, to, to be, let's say, at least proud of uh, that journey that you, uh, creative journey that you have uh, taken, and uh, and that's make the difference. It's not so much the what, it's the why. Why you have done it? Yes, yes, and, uh, yes, absolutely. Yeah, those are, are, are yeah. great things. No, it's just those little things that we need to believe in, and uh, it's just a question of point of view. It's not a question of uh, degrees or where we come from of education. Just a Educating yeah, the, the eye and and it could be visual and it could be just in the thoughts sometimes. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. And also for the in in term, I think at the beginning the inter the interviewers is not um they don't need to you don't need to have a very strong skills or very um, excellent capabilities in terms of something and they more um, need your potential and your your idea your thought. So I think that is like more um, spontaneous things they are thinking about. They they, they look at. Ah, it's true. That's a, that's probably a lot of hope for people listening. That yeah, sometimes it's just the potential. And in in the during the interview process, do you, do you remember besides that anecdote that you just told us? Uh, how did you show that potential? How did you were able like to express that? Uh, for me, I would always have the. Um, uh, portfolio to okay. present. Yeah, apart from CV, I have my own portfolio, and in my portfolio, I have the commercial work and also personal project. Uh, so I will show them different side, and also uh, maybe this is my trick for intern. I would suggest to put your personal works at the beginning because they will show they will see your, I would say, potential and your interest and your personal. Um, Athletic and style, and if it's for a junior, uh, a senior um, position, I would always put a commercial um, project at the beginning to show their your um, yeah professional side. So that's a yes. good that's a good uh, good tip. Yalin, I want to, to to thank you again for 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 your time and for for being really like honest about your journey and and what you believe it uh, has been really important and for all the advice that you 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 give us uh, uh, today. Yeah, is there anything that you you want to share, recommend, or uh, let us uh, tell us to keep an eye on or anything before we wrap up? Hmm. Well, yeah, I think travel a lot and um, 
never steal. This is the actually the campaign uh, night of Remova, okay. and the never steal. You can always, you you can always make make uh, make mistakes. You can try different things, but just keep going and try. That's an amazing way to wrap up uh, the this podcast. I love it. Never never be still and always keep moving, and and the same in your careers, in your life, in your learning. So. Thank you again for, for, for your time, Yalin. I hope to, to stay in touch with you and, you. and see where you, you're going to end up uh, in the next step of your career. So let's, uh, let's stay in, in touch. Coaching and seeing grow the next generation is probably my favorite activity. Their honesty and curiosity is a reminder of how passionate our industry can be. Exchanging with Yalin reminded me of my own beginnings learning about fashion history, trying to understand how the system worked, and finding pleasure in any operational task as long as I was part of the industry. In the end, what stayed with me after this conversation was really the fact that our industry has become so global that now the competition is worldwide. What matters today is the capacity to innovate, communicate, and collaborate while understanding the stories and value of the brand. If I had to summarize the key learnings of this conversation, I would say, one, if you are not from Europe, invest early in studying fashion history and learn to speak English and French. Two, get in the habit to network and contact professional, but lower your expectations you might receive no news at the beginning, but eventually you will. Three, remember that your point of view as a young professional is very valuable. You bring new ideas, new way of working and new knowledge. So trust yourself and develop a portfolio with some of your ideas. Fourth, while you are doing an internship, be at the service of your manager. And remember to learn well the fundamentals before pretending to work on more glamorous tasks. You are part of a system and every contribution counts. If you are still hearing this, thank you so much for tuning in. I know how much your time is valuable. If you enjoyed this episode and want to support the podcast, please subscribe and leave a review. This is the most efficient way to help us grow and entice people to listen to the show. If you have any questions, comments, or requests, please feel free to reach out on LinkedIn. In the next episode, I will receive Abib Gwabin Tani. This episode is very special to me because Abib is a good friend and fellow companion in my journey in the fashion and luxury industry. But the part I am the most excited about is because Habib is a unique storyteller. I promise you, you will not want to stop listening. So if you want to know how Habib became the store director of Dior Men on the 5th Avenue in New York City, stay tuned for our next episode. Until next time, I wish you a wonderful day.